In my opinion, the F5C has been the best US premium for quite a while. Not only is it a great grinder, but for its BR, it's also one of the best fighters available. However, it's not exactly a perfect plane either. In fact, compared to its peers, the F5C is chronically underpowered. But luckily for us peasantly Warfunder players, at one point or another, the Northrop engineers realized that instead of putting two leaf blowers in their fighter jet, maybe it'd be a better idea if they take the engine out of an F-18 and put it into the very small airframe of the F-5. And just like that, the F-20 Tiger Shark was born. In War Thunder, the F-20 Tiger Shark is a brand new premium in the US tech tree. And if you want to buy this jet, it will set you back 70 US dollars just like every other rank 7 pre- uh, hang on. That's not. Bruh. At 75 US dollars, this is currently the most expensive vehicle you can buy on the Gaijin store. But of course, for that money, you'll also get a little bit of premium time as well as some Golden Eagles. And actually, speaking of Golden Eagles, with today's video sponsor, Free GE for Warfunder, you too can earn Golden Eagles completely for free by completing simple tasks, such as filling out a survey or trying out a new game. And when you download the app through the first link in the description, make sure to use my invitation code MDK9K to receive 10 extra golden eagles to help you get started. Now, of course, because this plane is so expensive, many of you are probably asking yourself, is it worth it? Honestly, the only way to give you a proper answer to that question is to first explain what the F-20 actually is and what it isn't. I already mentioned that the F-20 is essentially just an F-5 but on steroids. And as you can imagine, this results in the F-20 being an absolutely amazing jet, at least on paper. Not only does it retain the amazing energy retention and flight performance that the F5s are known for, but it's also got that way more powerful engine which results in a much, much higher thrust to weight ratio than any of its older brothers. And perhaps more importantly, this aircraft is also equipped with a more advanced set of weapons. You can access the AM-9L as well as the AM-7F, which paired with the radar on this jet results in the F-20 being a rather lethal aircraft. Except, well, not really. Although this may be the ultimate evolution of the F-5 airframe, you really shouldn't look at it as such in War Thunder. And that's because this aircraft sits at a battle rating of 12.0, which is very much the territory of the F-16. You know that meme of you versus the guy she told you not to worry about? Well, that's essentially the best way to explain the F-20 versus the F-16A. The only time the F-20 is better than any of the F-16s is when you're accelerating from a full standstill whilst trying to take off from your airfield. The second you get airborne, every F-16 in the game will completely wipe the floor with the F-20. Not only does something like the F-16 MLU have a higher top speed, more countermeasures and better weapon loadouts, but it also has a better thrust to weight ratio at almost every speed. And even if you somehow manage to get into a dogfight in Araby which takes you below 300 kilometers per hour, that really doesn't end up making a difference because the F-16 is a lot more maneuverable even at those extreme extremely slow speeds. And the thing is, it's not like there is a small difference in flight performance between these two jets. No, the F-16s absolutely clown on the F-20, it's not even a competition. Which is a problem for the F-20, because at 12.0 there are 5 possible F-16s that you can run into, and if you get up tier, that number increases even more. TLDR, the F-20 is far removed from being the best vehicle at its battle rating. Although, honestly, I still found it to be quite a good grinder and overall getting kills was certainly possible. It's not a terrible vehicle vehicle. But if you already own some of the other F-16s in the game, there genuinely isn't any reason to go buy this just because you want to experience this airframe. Just play the F-16 instead, it's the same thing, but better in every single way. And therefore, there's really only one reason to consider buying the F-20, and that's because you want to use it to grind through the entirety of the US tech tree. Which honestly is entirely fair, because the US in War Thunder has one of the strongest air tech trees in the entire entire game. And because I said the F-20 is still a very decent grinder, that must mean it's a good purchase, right? 
Uh, no. At $75, US I genuinely struggle to recommend this vehicle to anybody, and that's for two major reasons. First and foremost, the F5C is $10 US dollars cheaper, and sure, that jet comes with slightly less premium time in GE, but really, the main reason the F20 costs more is because it is a rank 8 premium. In theory, a high ranking premium is better for grinding than a low ranking one, and that's because the higher the rank of the plane, the more aircraft you can efficiently research. Except, that's no longer true when you're talking about a tier 8 premium. Whether or not you're buying a tier 7 jet or a tier 8 jet, both of them will be able to grind all the way to the top of the US tech tree, at least as of today. So although you're spending more money to buy the F-20, you don't necessarily see any benefits from that extra investment. Which wouldn't have to be the end of the world if the F-20 was actually fun to play. And although, honestly, it wasn't the worst jet I've ever used, it also was nowhere near as fun as the F5C. So should you buy the F20? Well, let's put it like this. When somebody asks me which plane they should buy to grind out the US tech tree, the F20 Tiger Shark won't even be an honorable mention. Buy the F5C instead, it's not only a very competitive aircraft for its own battle rating, but it's also very fun to fly, very good at grinding, and all of that for 10 US dollars less. Anyway, that's enough rambling about my opinion on whether or not you should buy this plane. Let's take a look at what it actually is like in a match. In the footage you're seeing in the background, I'm going to be getting two kills with the AM7F in quick succession. And you'll probably notice that I'm not really doing much in order to shoot down these aircraft. I'm just locking onto their airframe and then clicking a button to launch my missile. The main reason I'm showing you this footage is because this is exactly what it's like to play the F-20 most of the time. The vast majority of the kills you'll be getting in this gent will be from you using your missiles. Now, of course, this is true for a lot of aircraft around this battle rating, but the main reason I'm bringing it up for the F-20 is because the amount of missiles you get in total is actually quite little, again compared to something like the F-16. Sure, you can carry 6 AM-9Ls whilst playing this gen, but really, in my experience, you want to be carrying the Sparrows, they're just better weapons for this matchmaker. The only problem is that when you do that, you can only carry 2 AM-9Ls, which means you only have 4 missiles in total. And although that's still enough to get yourself a couple of kills, it's also less than the amount of missiles that you find on something like, let's say, the F-16A ADF. Anyway, that's enough yapping about this plane's missiles, now let's talk about its guns. Like I said, dogfighting in this jet at this battle rating is not something you'll be doing very often, so when you get kills with the guns on this plane, it's usually gonna be situations like this. Honestly, I think it would have been nice if this jet had a Vulcan, but for all intensive purposes, the guns on this jet are good enough as is. Something else that's perfectly good enough about this plane are the amount of countermeasures as it gets, which might be a surprise to some because of course it only gets 45 countermeasure slots in total. However, because this plane only deploys one set of countermeasures at a time, you have 45 pops of flares in total, or half of that if you also decide to bring chaff. So although again the F-16A MLU does get more countermeasure deployments in total, most of the time whilst playing the F-20 I didn't run into any issues regarding the amount of countermeasures this jet carries. Now, I hope you'll forgive me for the rough transition, but I quickly want to commentate over what's happening in the background. As you can see, I'm engaging an F-15, and although the F-15 is a much better aircraft in every regard, I still managed to kill this enemy. Now, of course, that's because the enemy is an absolute bozo and for some reason decided to use none of the benefits that his airframe offers. But it also goes to show that even though the F-20's flight performance is objectively worse than a lot of jets you'll face, that ends up not making that much of a difference within the context of Error B. In other words, the flight performance of this jet is good enough to capitalize on the mistakes that the enemies are making around you. With that said, there is one more thing I want to talk about, which is this plan matchmaker. The key knight among you probably noticed that every bit of footage I've shown you so far has been of a down tier, and that's because at 12.0 this jet gets an extremely favorable matchmaker. Most of the games I played were either 11.0 to 12.0 or 11.3 to 12.3, so although this jet is technically a little bit over tiered for its own BR, most of the time you still end up being one of the better plans in the match just because you got down tiered and you end up fighting stuff like the FRS and the MiG-23ML. Granted, those planes 
things are still very scary whilst you're flying this aircraft, but most of the time the flight performance of this jet is then no longer as bad as it would be in a full up tier. TLDR, the F-20 isn't the best premium in War Thunder, and because it's also 10 US dollars more expensive than something like the F-5C, I struggle to recommend this jet to anybody. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, remember to subscribe, join my Discord server, and if you enjoyed this video, then maybe also consider watching the one that's currently shown to you on screen. It's kind of the same thing, a little bit different, but I think you will also like that one as well.